Today at INSEAD Knowledge, we are fortunate to have with us Case One Leder, former chairman of the board of Heineken, uh, National Bank of Holland, uh, INSEAD and some other companies. And we will talk about chairman of the board. For many years, chairmen were in the shade. CEO was a central figure in uh, business. But recently we started to pay more attention to people who chair boards. Today we will talk about what makes them effective. Hello. Good morning. It's great to have you with us. And I would like to start with a question. What does it mean to be a good chair? Number one, uh, the chairman really has to be in charge of the meeting. There should be no uh, questions as to who conducts the meeting, um, uh, who leads it, uh, who uh, gives the floor to people. Uh, he has to be, on the one hand, decisive, on the other hand, uh, very um, uh, receptive and make sure that everyone can get his, his point made, etc. So the body language is incredibly important for him to respond to. Um, and secondly, even more important, that he um, sums up uh, what has been discussed and or decided. In my view, many boards, or in many cases, um, it's left a little vague at the end what we're going to do, and that is, uh, uh, that is in my view, not very effective. Um, but these are qualities that you would have for any chairman. Um, the element that I would add is that uh, there's always a special relationship, should be uh, anyway, between him and the CEO. Um, the colleagues of the chairman uh, expect that relationship to exist, but they want to know what it entails. And uh, it should not be a separate channel, separate from what the other board members know. So it's up to the chairman to make sure that whatever he discusses uh, with um, uh, the CEO is, is known to uh, the other board members around the table. Plata once famously said that the best guardians of the society are philosopher kings. People who are not interested in power and people who are not interested in money and people who are interested in pursuit of knowledge. Are there any specific personal attributes of effective chairman? I, I think so. I, first of all, you have to realize that although uh, in the final analysis, uh, you're the one who carries all the responsibility for the company, uh, it is the CEO or the executive board of management that does the job. So um, if you want to use the chairmanship as a platform for your own ego, uh, uh, that's not going to work. Um, so you have to uh, not only accept, but almost you have to have a natural inclination of saying, this is the job of the executive management, I will support them. In fact, in some countries, like in my country, the first um, uh, responsibility of the board is to give advice and counsel to the executive board. So um, it is not a function that you exercise in public, uh, with the exception of chairing the um, uh, annual uh, meeting of shareholders. Um, but it's one of support uh, to people who create the ideas, create the business uh, and do it. So a certain modesty, which by the way is a virtue in general in life, uh, uh, should be um, on the top of the list for the, for the chairman. And the second one is that um, uh, it would also be a strong function of, as I say, support. Uh, you can question, you can challenge ideas of the executive board, but um, uh, uh, once the board has decided, the board should squarely stand behind the executive management. Board of directors is a very special group of people. They meet rarely, a few times a year. They all have multiple affiliations. They all usually successful, competent people. How do you lead them? And there are a couple of practical um, uh, ideas that people can use. The first is, uh, certainly if people fly in, uh, that you couple a dinner um, uh, to a dinner or a luncheon uh, to the board meeting. Um, in the United States, it's quite customary to uh, have a two-day meeting schedule anyway. You meet in the afternoon for the committees, you have a dinner at night, and you have the formal board, board meeting next morning. 
that is a very helpful structure, particularly then during the dinner. Uh, you can get to know one another better. You can use it of meeting high potentials within the company or discuss um, uh, topics of a longer term nature that do not require a decision at that moment. And the other element that I have um, instituted uh, everywhere is that either before the meeting or after the meeting, but usually before the meeting, uh, you meet without the executives being present because um, people come with the agenda in hand and that is the, uh, the business that you have to deal with. You worked on boards in many different countries and uh, some of them have a system of combined chair and CEO positions and others uh, have separate uh, chairman and CEO. What is your view on the benefits and disadvantages of combined, combined position and how to overcome these uh, risks? If I had it my way, uh, I would not have the combination of a chairman and CEO in, in one hand. Nevertheless, I serve on two birds today where that is the case and it, 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 it works. Um, and the reason is that uh, there has to be a check on the, on the CEO. And it's um, uh, if one person controls the execution and the agenda, it's very hard to get something on the agenda if there's a problem, perceived problem with the CEO. I'd rather see a, uh, a structure where also the CEO accepts that he has a boss uh, uh, and the boss should not use his, um, his powers, so to speak, uh, only when it's strictly necessary. But the fact that you have two layers of authority uh, uh, is, in my view, better for the checks and balances with, uh, within a company. Thank you so much for very insightful comments. Thank you.